some would say that I am uh, very fortunate to have this role at C as CISO at Twitter. Some would say not so much. Um, but uh, what I see my job as is to really help ensure that the public conversation is protected by ensuring that information security at Twitter is practiced in really strong ways. And what that means for me is that making sure that our data is protected, that we have a good uh, risk management decision framework, and that we're really enabling the business to thrive with the right guardrails around information security. Um, so I see my role as the CISO here to constantly inform, educate folks on risks and how they can make good decisions as it relates to information security on a day-to-day -day basis, um, which also enables other functions like privacy and trust. Yeah, the role of the CISO has transformed, right? When I started my career, the word CISO didn't really exist outside of banking. So I started my career in a utility company. There was no CISO there. In fact, one of the companies I went to work for in tech very early in my career, they had hired the first non-bank CISO. Um, and so I remember when I started, the CISO role was just starting to come to bear and folks were just starting to learn what a CISO did. Um, and now it's every company, it's almost mandate that you have to have a security leader in place. Um, and the security leader has taken various forms and depending on company to company that you go to, uh, the CISO is not like a CFO or a chief legal officer where it's very defined structure in how those functions usually perform, how they report, how they are uh, organized. The CISO is still kind of varying and it's still being defined um, in company to company. In some companies, it's a very business risk compliance function. In others, it's more of a technical function that's de developing architectures for different products. Um, in, in others, it's uh, just a compliance function. So it just depends. Um, but the amazing part is that the CISO role is almost at every company that you look at um, now and even startups are thinking very early about bringing a CISO in early on and um, now more so than ever I think you're starting to see the development of risk committees in addition to audit committees and board meetings at companies and so CISOs are not just presenting at the board they might be presenting at the audit committee at the risk committee and the CISO role now, you see more CISOs serving on boards as well. So the value of a chief information security officer has just grown tremendously. And I think in the future, we'll see um, hopefully more and more non-tech boards have CISOs on them. And the CISOs just having a very powerful role in a company helping enable the business strategy, which is already starting to happen. But I think we're going to see uh, just a complete elevation of this role. I think the toughest part around security culture is it's all about how do you win the hearts and minds, right? You can develop security standards all day, you can build tools all day, um, but who cares if nobody cares? <laughs> if there's ways to bypass it and folks don't really take to heart why this is important, then there's you're really losing the essence of security. And winning the hearts and minds, I think, is a very, very, very hard job. You have to understand how a person works. So that person might be in the development org, they might be in the engineering org, they might be in the legal org or the marketing org. And you have to think about what they care about, how they work, and then really bring the right data to them to say, this is why this is important and figuring out in the context of your company, how do you build that culture? Um, and it, it varies from company to company. Um, I remember at a very engineering heavy culture that I worked in, we had to bring like proof of how we could attack the app that they had built to make them really believe that security, they had to understand security in a more meaningful way. And when they saw that their own app that they had developed being attacked like that, I think that's what won their hearts and minds to say, oh wow, okay, that now I really do understand why this is important. 
Um, and so bringing data to the discussion, I think, always helps in transforming security culture. And that data varies depending on what team it is that you're trying to influence. I would say one thing I also learned is that there is information security has been something that's kind of like you it's organically grows in the company <laughs> and you kind of see it that where it starts really small and it's a grassroots effort and then it starts kind of growing although that can be effective it's a lot slower than having top-down championship and what i mean by that is having your executive team at the highest levels championing security winning their hearts and minds first and making them your biggest champions and allies and driving the security culture and if you have that at the top i think it makes it a lot easier and a lot it, you can run security then a lot faster and uh, companies who do that well, I think they see their business runs faster because security becomes an enabler um, and you don't see as many incidents and having to go and firefight later on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing the fireside chat. And I think um, some of the things that I hope to share are some of the things I just we talked about today at a deeper level. But I think there's a lot more to it, right? Who you, when you're transforming a security culture, it also matters that your information security team, how you've built that, who you've brought on board, that their mindset itself is in a good place as well. And I think um, in this past year, we've gone through a lot, past year and a half, gosh, it will be almost say two years with COVID, right? We've gone through a lot. Um, you know, we've seen not only just because of the pandemic, but there's a lot of world events and things that affect mental health and so forth, which makes people prone to more mistakes. And I think sharing some of my personal stories on what I went through during that time um, and how it, and even uh, coming to a company in a 100% uh, remote environment, having to build trust um, in a remote environment like that, and then having to build security culture was extremely challenging. Um, but here I am one year into the role and uh, we've made um, major progress. And so I think um, in the Fireside Chat, I'm really excited to get deeper into those stories and uh, share with all of you my learnings. Mm -hmm.